Okay, so now we've reached part three of our three-part video series on Cauchy Integral Questions, Revision and Practice. And in this video, we're going to deal with situations where there are multiple poles, singularities, uh, for example, the integral of f of z over z minus a, z minus b, where z equals a and z equals b are both singularities slash poles. Now what we're going to do exactly the same as in the first um, two videos. We are going to have to ask ourselves the same questions because sometimes these things can be very very easy. So let's have a look at question one. First question we always ask ourselves when we see any of these Cauchy integrals, is there even a pole or singularity? So for example the integral of f of z dz around a curve c if f of z is analytic over the region um, and there is no pole or singularity then that equals zero by Cauchy's integral theorem without us even having to do any work whatsoever. Uh, so you certainly want to hope that you get that uh, question in your exam. Okay, now question two. If there is pole singularity, is it within the region bound by C? We will come back to that in a minute. Um, let's have a look at question three. This is what we did in part one. Basically, there was a pole singularity. It was within the region. Uh, so basically, we had the integral of the form f of z over z minus a dz around a curve where a was within the curve and we used the Cauchy integral formula to solve this f of a equals 1 over 2 pi i the integral of f of z over z minus a dz that was what we used to solve those and we did those in the first video okay now in the second video what we did was we dealt with situations where the pole was greater than that the order of the pole was greater than 1. So, for example, the integral of f of z over z minus a squared, for example. And we dealt with that over a curve c, where a was within the region. And we dealt with that using the Cauchy integral theorem um, formula for derivatives, which was f n a equals n factorial over 2 pi i, the integral of f of z over z minus a to the n plus 1 dz we, we did those using that formula there okay and basically the one uh, that we have left now is question five this video how do we proceed if there are multiple poles or singularities okay now what we're going to do is we are going to do this question here uh, which has actually got three different contours over which uh, uh, we are supposed to do the integration. And we'll look at that in a minute. But first of all, uh, what I want to do is let's go back to question two. Because even when we have multiple poles or singularities, let's go back to question two. Question two here. This is really important because occasionally you do get questions whereby, for example, uh, let's say, for example, we have the integral of um, f of z over z minus a, z minus b, dz around the curve c and let's just draw uh, let's say that z equals a is here and let's say that z equals b is here if c for example was the unit circle here b and a are not inside that circle and therefore this function here is analytic within the curve c and therefore we can just use Cauchy's integral theorem um, which says that the answer is zero uh, likewise if this was the curve here um, because none of the singularities poles are within um, the region bound by C and therefore we don't need to do anything. So whenever you see something like this, always make sure and check, hang on a sec, are at least one of the poles within the area that we are integrating? Okay, so I mean the only time we would have a, uh, to do um, uh, something is let's say for example if this was our region here, well finally z equals a is within inside the region and then we can't use Cauchy's integral theorem. Okay, so now let's go into the actual question, let's go back into it. Okay, so let's first of all have a look at this. So we've got uh, cos z over z, z squared add 4. Okay, so let's just simplify this a little bit. Well clearly... Uh, z squared plus 4 we can factorise as z plus 2i z minus 2i and so therefore we can rewrite this integral here as the integral over the curve of cos z over z minus 0. Well z minus 0 is clearly the same as z. I like writing it as z minus 0 because it just reminds you that there is a pole at 0. z plus 2i z minus 2i dz. So clearly here we have three poles, 
pole number 1 is at z equals 0, pole number 2 is at z equals minus 2i, and pole number 3 is at z equals plus 2i. Okay, so how are we going to deal with that? Well, the first thing we're going to do <coughs> is we have, well, we got, first of all, we've got three separate curves, so we're going to do three separate questions. But at each question, um, when we look at the curve, we have to see, hang on a sec, are any of these poles actually within the region around which we are integrating? So let's have a look, first of all, at uh, the curve C, mod Z equals 1. Okay, well, that one's nice and easy. Let's just draw here. Well, mod Z equals 1 is basically our unit circle here, centred at zero. Now our three poles are Z, so that's the point I, that's the point one, that's point minus one, and that's point minus I. Our poles are at here, two I, minus two I, and zero. So the only pole which is within C, and we'll remember we're doing A at the moment, right, which is mod Z equals one. The only pole which is in C is Z equals zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a trick and we're actually going to do the same trick three times. So what we're going to do is we are going to rewrite our integral as the following. The integral cos z over z plus 2i z minus 2i over z minus zero dz around the curve c and remember the curve c is, is this one because we're doing a at the moment right? z minus zero. Now Basically, this bit here is entirely analytic within that region there. And therefore, this becomes a simple Cauchy's integral formula question. Basically, where f of z equals cos of z over z plus 2i, z minus 2i, which is analytic across the entire region, and a equals zero. So this basically becomes a very simple question um, of the type that we did in video one where we used Cauchy's integral formula f of a equals one over two pi i the integral of f of z over z minus a dz and that's exactly what we are going to use again today. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to just put in our values into here so we have that the integral of cos of z over z plus 2i, z minus 2i, which we're calling f of x, over z minus 0, that's around the curve c, dz, that equals f of 0, because our pole is at 0 times 2 pi i, so all we need to do now is work out the value of f of 0, and given that that is our f of z, well f of 0 is equal to cos of 0 over 0 plus 2i, 0 minus 2i, which equals cos of 0 is 1, and that expands out to 4. So our answer is 2 pi i over 4, or pi i over 2. And that is the answer to our integral here, when our curve C is a mod z equals 1. Okay, so that's the answer to the first one. Now let's have a look at the second one here, and um, we'll go and do that one. So basically, you've seen this before. So this is basically, just as a reminder, e to the i theta from theta equals 0 to 2 pi is the unit circle. So 2 times that is a, is a circle radius 2, and 3i plus means that the circle is centred at 3i. So let's quickly draw that one. So let's get ourselves a bit of space here. So this is b now. So let's draw again our diagram. Here is the point z equals zero, here is the point z equals minus two i, and here is the point z equals whoops, z equals two i, and we are um, integrating around, sorry, what was the uh, thing again? Three uh, i plus two e to the i theta. So basically, here is the center of the circle here, and the circle will look something along the lines of that. So this is our second contour. Um, integral and you can see that z equals 2i is inside but z equals 0 and z equals minus 2i are not and therefore we can do pretty much exactly the same trick that we've just just done this time we rewrite the integral as the integral of cos z over z minus 0 z plus 2i over z minus 2i dz around our second curve c which is this one here 
Um, and basically, we let f of z be equal to that, which is entirely analytic within this curve here. So again, we just need to use the Cauchy integral formula. So we let f of z equal that. We let a equal 2i. And hey, presto, off we go again. Very similar to the, uh, the previous question. f of a equals 1 over 2 pi i, the integral of f of z over z minus a dz and that gives us putting in our values oh sorry i'm gonna have to go on to the next page here putting in our values that gives us that the integral of cos z over z minus zero z plus two i over z minus two i dz around our second curve c equals two pi i times f of two i and so all we need to do is stick in 2i into our function, which, remember, is this. So f of 2i is equal to cos of 2i over 2i minus 0, 2i plus 2i. All I'm doing is I'm putting in the value 2i into that function there. Uh, and we can simplify all of that lot uh, to equal cos of 2i over uh, minus 8. OK, um, now we could leave it in this form here, but uh, let, let's just use the form uh, cos theta equals e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta over 2. Um, if you don't know what that means, check out the video, which has a link in the description to this video. We, we've done complex cos uh, in other videos. And so therefore, cos of 2i would equal e to the i times 2i and e to the minus i times 2i over 2, which equals e to the minus 2 and e squared over 2. And therefore, the answer to part b, just adding all this lot up together, equals minus 1 over 8 times 2 pi i times this e squared and e to the minus 2 over 2. And that equals minus pi i over 8 e squared and e to the minus 2, uh, or we could have left it in cos form if you didn't want to do that, um, because it could have been multiple choice where they leave it in, in cos form, so it would have been equal to minus pi i over 4 cos of 2i. I mean, it depends what sort of uh, form they want you to put the final answer in. Okay, so basically that's the second one. Now let's go back to the third one. So the third one here is basically almost the same, but in, so that we have a, a circle radius 2, but it actually starts at minus 3, sorry, it's centred at minus 3i instead of centred at 3i. So let's just draw that, and you're going to find a lot of similarities here. So if we now draw our uh, thing, and here's a minus 3i, and we have a circle, uh, which is uh, radius 2, so let's put that in there. So there's our circle of radius 2. Here is the point minus 2i. Here is the point 0. Here is the point 2i. So now we see the only pole that is in the region is z equals minus 2i. And so we're going to do exactly the same uh, trick that we did before. We're going to rewrite our integral as cos of z over z minus 0, z minus 2i over z plus 2i dz around our third curve c here and as before this function here is entirely analytic inside that region there and so therefore we can use Cauchy's integral formula basically having f of z equals that and a equals minus 2i and you're going to see that this is almost an identical formula to, uh, to what we've just done so we have f of a is 1 over 2 pi i, the integral of f of z over z minus a dz. That's Cauchy's integral formula. So therefore, we have that the integral of cos of z over z minus 0, z minus 2i over z plus 2i dz equals 2 pi i times f of minus 2i this time. Um, and f of minus 2i is equal to cos of minus 2i over minus 2i minus 0, 
minus 2i minus 2i, all I've done is I've just put z equal minus 2i into our function here, which is analytic in that region, uh, which equals uh, cos of minus 2i over minus 8. And again, if we want to put uh, use cos theta equals e to the i theta add e to the minus i theta over 2, that gives us that cos of minus 2i equals e to the i minus 2i add e to the minus i minus 2i over 2 which equals e squared add e to the minus 2 over 2 which you'll notice is actually exactly the same uh, answer as in b because even in the complex just as an aside cos of z equals cos of minus z uh, it's same as in the reals, it still works in the complex. And so just basically adding all of this lot up now, the answer to the third one is going to be e squared add e to the minus 2 over 2 times by minus 1 over 8 times by 2 pi i. Uh, and, that equals, whoops, and that equals minus pi i over 8 e squared add e to the minus 2, which coincidentally is exactly the same answer as part b, but that is a coincidence, there's no reason why that should have been, uh, or if we want to leave it in cos form, minus pi i over 4 cos of, well, we could either put minus 2i or a cos of 2i, because obviously cos of 2i is the same as cos of minus 2i. Okay, and there we go, that is the answer to the third one. So this is the end of the three video series. I hope you found it useful. Just going back here, because this isn't part of the series, but the question remains here, for example, we do have uh, three poles, z equals zero, z equals two i, and z equals minus two i, and let's just draw, and this gives you an idea of what the next video is gonna be on, although it's not in this series. So we got zero minus two i and plus two i. What happens if the region includes two of the poles or all three of the poles. For that, we need to use the residue theorem and we will do a separate video on that very soon. Okay, well I hope you found this useful. I hope these come up in exams because if they do, they're very easy uh, once you get the idea and once you uh, follow those five questions. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please uh, like it and subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.